What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here. This is a video by popular demand. I've had a lot of questions being sent in. People asking for a head-to-head -head comparison between the just released Samsung built Google Nexus S and the also Samsung built Galaxy S. In this case we have the Verizon wireless variant here, the Samsung Fascinate. So we're going to put these two head to head. They're very similar in a lot of respects and see if we can determine what the big differences are and whether or not Android 2.3 makes a difference or whether or not you're better off having an older operating system with Samsung's TouchWiz put on top of it. So let's go ahead and get started. So for those of you watching that maybe aren't familiar with these two devices, just a quick refresher. We've got the Nexus S on one side, which is running a completely naked, skin-free version of Android. It's the current newest version of Android 2.3 called Gingerbread. On the other side, we've got the Galaxy S running Android 2.1 with TouchWiz. I know some people in the world have had upgrades to 2.2. Uh, we have not been endowed with that yet in the US, so this test is going to be with Android 2.1 running on it. So what are the big OS differences here? Well, one of the cool things about Android is that it's an open source operating system, and as such, it can be completely skinned and modified by manufacturers and users, and that's exactly what Samsung has done. Uh, so right here, You've got some notifications in the pull-down menu. Uh, you can go ahead and automatically select Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, and airplane mode without having to futz around with any sort of settings. Uh, you notice that you've got a four rows of icons at the bottom. All the applications are encapsulated. You've got a ton of additional widget functionality. Go ahead and show you real quickly what those are. Android widgets and Samsung widgets. You have a lot here that you can go ahead and add. Uh, it's a decent amount of functionality, it's a lot of visual flash, but that visual flash also can take its toll uh, when it comes to memory processing, something that we'll talk about in just a little bit. So here we've got the naked version of Android 2.3. Uh, you notice that we've got a little bit of a dock down at the bottom with new colored icons. The icons at the top are now green, the battery icon is uh, sort of turned on its side, or turned straight up rather, versus what we've seen on older versions. You've got a new keyboard for, uh, for text entry, which I'll show you guys. Uh, certainly, one of the nice things about Android is that it's open source, so you can go ahead and pull in uh, new text entries. I don't know who that person is, so we'll go ahead and leave their number public if they're going to go ahead and send out spam text messages. Uh, and you can see there's a new keyboard. You can go ahead and use a ton of third-party keyboards as well. There's a lot of under-the-hood API differences as well as far as how graphics are processed, 3D images, and that kind of stuff. Uh, and we'll see sort of what difference that makes, if any, when we do some speed tests. Just wanted to give you a real quick overview of these, and I've done in-depth videos on Android 2.3 Gingerbread, as well as the operating system uh, on the Galaxy S, and more particularly the Samsung skin TouchWiz. All right, so let's talk about the displays on these two because they are very similar. Uh, both have four inch diagonal Super AMOLED displays with resolution of 800 by 480. And what Super AMOLED means is that the touch mechanism on the screen, this glass, is actually built into the glass, not sitting right on top. There are a few other nuances in there, but what that's gonna translate to are darker darks, richer colors, and a lot better visibility in direct sunlight. However, the downside of that is that you do have a little bit of a bluish kind of gray tint on the Super AMOLED screens. When you use the phone on its own for a while, you don't really notice it. But if you look at it next to another display, you will notice that there's a bit of a color tint to it. Uh, sometimes I find it bothersome, but for the most part, the display is absolutely gorgeous, vibrant, and beautiful. Uh, on the Nexus S, however, there's one bit of a difference. The display is a little bit curved. I don't know if you can see that on camera, uh, but it does make for a little nicer experience moving your finger over and holding it up to your head. Nothing giant uh, there, but it is something to uh, take notice when you're comparing the two devices uh, and figuring out maybe which one is best for you. Uh, from a processor standpoint, once again, the theme here uh, is identical. We've got one gigahertz Cortex A8 Hummingbird processors, which are going to be powering both of these, uh, running with 512 megabytes of RAM each. Uh, cameras, again, same stuff. Uh, on the back, we've got five megapixel sensors on each. In the Fascinate's case, and this is the Verizon wireless version, we do have a flash, but not all versions 
of the Galaxy S do have a flash. Again, the same 5 megapixel sensors, and there's a flash here on the Nexus S. If you flip it over, here's where we see some differences. Uh, the Nexus S has a front-facing VGA camera. You use that for video chatting. Uh, you can also use that for taking really cool pictures of yourself uh, out at some clubs. Uh, something to, uh, uh, to keep in mind. Camera-wise, the functionality is very, very, very similar. Uh, the VGA gets uh, added benefit on the front. If something that you're looking for and something that you need, uh, it's good to have the option. Uh, now, as far as networks and how these are going to uh, go on different carriers, the Nexus S is unlocked, but right now it only supports T-Mobile's 3G bands uh, in the U.S. So if you're a T-Mobile customer, you want to use their variant of the Galaxy S, you know, you can pick whichever one's going to be best for you. Uh, if you're not a T-Mobile customer, if you're on AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, uh, you know, you're going to be very limited with what you can choose, and you may have to pick the Galaxy S if a Samsung built Android device is really what you are looking for. So let me go ahead and run a little bit of speed test here and when I'm done, uh, I'll run the Quadrant benchmarking test. So let me go ahead and clear all the memory from each. I put a uh, memory clearing program, there we go, uh, right here on the Galaxy S. It's, a, not a, it's more of a task killer. I don't recommend using these sort of very regularly, but I do want to show that we're starting from as clear memory as we can. So we're gonna go ahead and kill all selected apps. Uh, on Android 2.3, I actually do have a task manager built in. If you go into menu, you can go ahead and see manage apps. And Samsung does include a task manager on their TouchWiz interface. I just use a third party one. We'll go ahead and check out running. It'll let me know what's running. And you can see it's just settings, Google services, and Android keyboard, the stuff that sort of always has to be running uh, on there. So we've got uh, clear memory on each. Let's go ahead and try and run some uh, some similar applications and see if we have any speed difference. Uh, let's try one of my favorites, and certainly different applications uh, may have different speeds. I can't do a test on everything out there, uh, but I do want to show you just some samples. So let's start with one of my favorite games, Angry Birds. In this case, it's Angry Birds Seasons. Uh, and I will try really hard to put you at the same time. Uh, it's more difficult than you might expect. All right, so I hit them both. They got the Rovio screen at exactly the same time. I mean, this is almost identical so far, uh, as far as speed goes. Actually, it was ready to play first on the Galaxy S over the Nexus S. So there you go. Android uh, 2.3 did not win, uh, and Samsung's touch was interface actually uh, launched things a bit faster. I'll go ahead and close these. The music can be a bit on the annoying side. All right, so let's go ahead and try some browser speed and see if we have any difference uh, in speed here as well. So I'll go ahead and open up the browser. I should mention that these are relatively clean installs uh, of both uh, operating systems. All right, so we've got uh, a little techno buffalo on each and do a simple refresh. You can see it's the swipe keyboard uh, is loaded up here, so what techno buffalo. Uh, these are sites that have been loaded before on each of these devices, so consider a test of websites that you visit on a regular basis. I'll go ahead and run this test and I'll give you my general impressions uh, on speed. You can see that flash content is loading uh, on both. You got flash, uh, flash light support on the Galaxy S and you have flash 10.1 support here on the Nexus S. Let's go ahead and refresh both of these. Go ahead and do this and we'll hit go, at least try and hit go at exactly the same time. Hit it there. Hit it there. Let's see if we have any speed difference. And these are running on both the same uh, Wi-Fi networks. So again, it looks like we are uh, almost head to head. Maybe the Nexus S has a little bit of an edge. Uh, and it did finish just a hair sooner. Uh, so in using both these devices and noticing speed, uh, I will say that 3D gaming games that use a lot of 3D stuff, things like Need for Speed or if you want to use a Google Earth, uh, is noticeably zippier. Uh, on the Nexus S. Now is that little bit of speed increase, which we didn't even see in these tests, uh, a reason to go out and want to ditch your new Galaxy S and pick up a Nexus S because it's a new phone on the block? Most definitely not. The Galaxy S on its own is a really capable phone, very quick and very robust. And you may like Samsung's TouchWiz interface. Personally, I don't like the encapsulated icons that you get in the menu system. Uh, like I showed you guys in the beginning, I'll go ahead and show you one more time. So all these icons are encapsulated. I prefer the native Android look of uh, 2.3, which is going to be available on the Nexus S. However, that's just personal preference. Both devices are extremely well capable and very similarly spec. 
if I have to pick a winner, uh, I would pick the Nexus S just because it's a little bit of speed increase. Uh, you've got that front VGA camera, uh, and I prefer sort of native uh, Android in its unskinnedness uh, over Samsung's TouchWiz, but TouchWiz does add some functionality. Uh, so really, this is going to be a personal preference. Uh, if I was picking one, again, I would pick the Nexus S, but it would be very close. I've used the Galaxy S as my daily phone. I was absolutely thrilled with it, uh, and I think you will be as well. So hopefully this cleared things up for you guys and gave you a head-to-head -head comparison of each phones. I am John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. Be sure to check out the site for all your tech news for exclusive content. Check me out at Twitter, twitter.com slash John4Lakers. All those links are down in the what have you, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.